Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back, of course, to the Time Bomb channel. And yes, we are in for a serious treat to, uh, with today's vids and today's watches. So please settle back into your Thomas the Tank Engine onesie. Regulars to the channel uh, will have seen quite a few uh, Zero West watches. <coughs> Sorry about the noise. Um, on the channel and these two have uh, been kindly lent in to me uh, by Andrew over at Zero West. They will be going back to them unfortunately so this is not a paid review in any way shape or form. Moreover I don't think I need to be paid uh, for uh, these <laughs> to review these. So what we're looking at here then is two of their new releases from the Flying Scotsman series. We have over here on the left the FS1, which is the uh, the Pale Rider, if you like, with the uh, the PVD shroud. And then over on the right we have the FS2, which I'm nicknaming the Black Smoke. No particular reason for that either. Um, let me just pause there, zoom in the camera a little bit. Okay, so watch is out of the box. Again, just a slightly clearer look then. So this is the FS1, as I say, pale screen or pale dial there. And shrouded by that, um, you know, lovely, lovely uh, PVD uh, case body. And then a very, very different take here um, with the black dialer, silver hand, silver uh, owl markers, silver case body. Two watches that are, you know, evidently packed, <laughs> packed to the gunnels with finesse. And yes, the chaps at Zero West are all about celebrating key moments and accolades of uh, British history and engineering. And in so, in so doing, to me, I think these watches offer up something that I think few other watch brands are willing to risk. In the current world of bland, insipid watch designs and Apple watches, and then some other silliness. To me, these two um, Zero West watches, let me just get the focus there, these two Zero West watches are a, a labor of passion, an almost Sisyphean task of working with a piece of metal tubing from the original tubing from the train, a truly finite material. Certainly not easy to get your grubby mitts on. Um, and then you run the danger, of course, of, of it all going pear-shaped um, during the cleaning and repurposing phase, phases. That repurposing and in, uh, included uh, cleaning years of the accumulated dirt and baked on grime from the tubes, internal and external surfaces much manual scraping and blasting was needed to reveal that final steel surface underneath, taking care, of course, not to over clean and destroy that unique patina. That tube was then carefully slit, flattened into a rough rectangular sheet. Zero West told me that that was exceptionally difficult to do and took them hours upon hours. Once happy with how flat it was, it was ready for fly cutting to an exact thickness. It was then machine punched and die set a hydro hydraulic turret with 20 ton press that was used for punching out the 200 discs from those steel sheets. The, dis the discs were then laser engraved with the Flying Scotsman uh, 1472 um, uh, uh, serial number on the back and set in of course to that uh, billet machined and uniquely numbered uh, case back. So you can see our case, our uh, unique number there just at the bottom. And I think all of understanding that process will allow us to, to accept that there are only going to be a hundred of these watches in production. So yes, uh, finite material and a truly limited edition run that I think that we as watch nutters can relate to. Seiko seem to offer more limited editions um, than most watch buyers can handle um, with what I think many of those designs should be rele rele relegated Excuse me, to the uh, design trash. Uh, been, but I digress. The Flying Scotsman. A little background in case you'd uh, you'd missed out. Um, a train designed back in 1923. It's broken loads of records. It blew out smoke between London and Edinburgh with unabashed pride. And I think it was also with the train that tickled uh, the tickly bits of many a grubby urchin up and down the UK for many, many years. And many of those gr grubby urchins grew up and prospered. Um, and spent thousands and thousands of pounds keeping the Flying Scotsman alive. As it pounds and dollars, because I believe the train actually spent some time in the US also. Zero West then have designed two watch dials uh, based on the uh, vintage clocks and steam gauges that I think are both homage to the past with those design cues, yet also saying something about the future. Respecting history, history to then write the future. 
that they offer us, I think, as well, two unique and, can I say, annoying choices, which one to pick. When I showed these to the wife, she immediately picked this sportier PVD, uh, speed gauge based ver dial version. Um, I think she prefers the contrasting colors that are evident on the watch. You know, that splash of color with the, uh, with the red seconds hand there as it tricks around. Um, that green loom stripe as well, I'll show you that in a minute as well. It actually stands out quite str much stronger in, in daylight than actually seeing here on camera. Whereas personally, I felt that this black dialer uh, just epitomizes the classic watch design. And I think the clean steel as well also allows you to uh, see better the lines and the bumps, the lumps and bumps of the case body. I'm not normally a fan of uh, shiny steel, but I have to admit here that it really, really, really works. With these new uh, releases as well, Zero West have moved away from their traditional, if you're going to call it that, 44 mil case bodies. These are going to be much easier wearers for many more people. So what they've done is they've shrunk the case body down, so it's now down to 41 mils across. It's still a fairly substantial 13 mils deep. It's then a much easier 46 mils north to south, sitting on 22 mil lugs. But you can see as well just how much those lugs dip. It's both the same on, on both of these, as I say. Really do drop down. Let me just throw this one on wrist one and show you what it actually looks like. As I say, I think that that wrist print um, is going to be far, far, far easier for so many people. My wrist is seven and a quarter inch. Um, and this to me is an absolutely ideal fit in every shape. It doesn't, it doesn't feel heavy. It sits very comfortably. As I say, that lug design is brilliant. Um, it's the same DSL lugs off their other case bodies, but again, they've just managed to shrink everything down. Um, absolutely spot on. The watches then come with 100 meters worth of watery goodness, um, each of them. Um, and then buzzing away inside in both is the uh, Solita SW200, and that's the top premium grade movement. Now, maybe this is an area for future Zero West release it releases. Could we see some more um, advanced or elaborate movements I think the SW200 in its different guises pops up in a lot of cheaper watches also. And I appreciate that this is the top premium grade version. Um, but I'm thinking that it would be great to see a more advanced movement within the watch that then reflects all of the, the obsessive, painful work that's gone into creating everything else um, that we can see on the watch. The, uh, on the black dialer here, I mean, I think that the, 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 the hands and the hour markers here um, are as close to a station clock as you could possibly get without it looking like a, a, a mundane. You also see that they've got those very subtle hour boxes holding those Romans in place. The silver disc as well of the Rehort, you can see as well on this one and also on the FS1 that the screws align, the four screws around that rehaul align absolutely perfectly. Um, notice and, um, that on the case body, the screws don't align. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm just simply flagging it up. Up top, both of them have that slightly domed uh, AR coated sapphire. And as you can see there, just from that profile, just a brilliant, brilliant piece of glass up top there. Just a slight, slight dome in the center there, just enough. And as you can see, it sits up just a little proud of that uh, case body bezel. Yeah, not too much distortion, but as I say, that just that little curve is so very, very, very subtle. Um, they both come with a signed crown. Um, it's, it's screwed down, obviously, and just look at the knurling on there. I mean, Fiddle is fantasy. Uh, the knurling on there, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. No crown guards on these, so they do sit out quite proudly. But as I think with that case body size and specs, it actually is, isn't too much of an issue, especially if you're a lefty or you're wearing it on your left wrist, sorry. <laughs> um, you've also then got uh, sapphire sitting across the um, case back insert. And this, of course, then is the train's metallic contribution to the watch. You've then got obviously your technical specs, details, data, all around the, uh, the necessaries there. And then right at the bottom, you can just see the issue number out of 100. 
and curiously and very nicely, um, Andrew has sent me number 28 of each of these. So whoever gets 28 of each of these, I am just a little jealous. Um, <laughs> coming back to those case backs, I mean, yeah, you can just see, I mean, I, I think it was on one of the plane, um, plane watches that they did where they, where that central disc was actually sort of, it came across as a smooth steel. This one, you know, contains all that pati patina and, you know, lumps and bumps and grains and dirt and everything else. And I think it, I think it's perfect that they've done it that way because you can almost feel the vibrations of the train tracks and the history oozing um, out of that molten metal. Listening to myself as I'm you know, gushing over these watches, I'm actually wondering as well if I'm the wrong person to be reviewing them. Uh, maybe you need somebody who's a little bit more, you know, balanced, you know, so, so, who's, who's not as obsessed. I love watches. When I look at these two and think of the backstory, it kind of, re kind of reminds me why the watch hobby or the watch obsession itself actually affects so many of us. Zero West are giving us uh, designs um, that are packed with tangible history. And yes, I get it. It's a niche corner of the watch world and trains are not everyone's passions. I certainly am not an anorak, a basher, a fotter, or a ferro equinologist. As a watch nerd, I find myself in a glass house when it comes to name calling a train spotter. But for many of us, train travel can still evoke elements of nostalgia and romance, I think. I myself was traveling across the Kizilkum Desert in Uzbekistan a few weeks back thinking of Francis young husband and his mate Alexander Bokara Burns on his foolhardy trip to Kiva. And then a month later I was in Poland cruising through old rail yards. I found it so hard not to drift off into historical reverie. But yes, back to the watches, mustn't get sidetracked, choo choo. I also need to give a huge slice of credit for the watches coming to the channel today uh, to Simon Carter. Simon runs the Zero West Watch Nutters Collective Club on Facebook. I'll pop a link down below. Please do sign up to the group, join the group, message uh, Simon if you are a Zero West owner of one of their other watches or if you're just like me, a fan. I'm hoping to attend their annual meetup later this year to interview and learn more about the group of wristwatch aficionados who are so passionate about the Zero West brand. Back onto the watches. I mean, loom junkies will uh, clearly lean to the uh, FS1 because yeah, check that loom, that loom spread around the dial as it just pumps up those uh, sur sur surrounding digits. I mean, just absolutely brilliant. I think the effect of the uh, silver rehort just you know, accentuates that, uh, that loom even further. And again, hands there, uber visible um, across the dial. On the FS2, uh, the loom is a little bit more limited, um, but then being the dressier of the two pieces, I think we'd be surprised if this was loomed up like a dive watch. Both of these come with either uh, black, green, blue, or red um, Zero West bespoke straps. Um, again, so they're all, all their own straps, um, signed crowns, etc. as you'd expect. I imagine that their uh, leather straps would also work because I believe most of their watches have got 22 mm uh, lugs. Again, in trying to remain objective, um, I've already set Andrew the un any unenviable task of offering a Zero West watch at a price uh, for us blue collar blokes. And then another request would be perhaps uh, to start offering some steel bracelets for their watches. It's not a criticism of the rubbers on these, they're absolutely spot on, but of course many of us do like wearing our watches on steel strappage. I imagine though that their, their unique bespoke DSL lugs might be part of the reason why they don't currently offer um, any steel straps, but let's see how Zero West respond in the future. Lastly, I think the Zero West quiver of watches has grown rapidly um, over the last couple of years, and the one area that hasn't mirrored that growth, I think, as mentioned before, is working with some more advanced movements to give us that, that additional high-end attribute that you are getting with absolutely everything else on these watches. The other watches, the uh, Aeroplane series ones, the, the, the Spitfire, Hurricane and Lancaster uh, watches, I think are slightly toolier. 
and they're heavier, they're bigger, chunkier. Um, but these ones with that slightly reduced wrist print, I think will make for much easier daily wearers for more wrist sizes. And as a consequence, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see what Zero West do with their future releases with the case size. Maybe they'll be offering the same case designs, or so the, the same designs of, within the theme, but perhaps in both case sizes. Maybe that depends as well on the, the success and uptake of these two. All right, guys, um, last views of the watches here. I'm, I'm acutely aware of the fact that I'm besotted with these two, and apologies if that's been a little too sickly sweet during the review. Please do drop me a comment down below as to your thoughts and whether I've missed something on these watches that you feel is uh, acutely important and something that we, we should be aware of. But as I say, my preference of the two is this dressier black. I mean, absolutely freaking gorgeous. And God, I wish I could afford one. Anyway, thanks as always for your time and for your view. Andrew at Zero West, I, I cannot thank you enough, mate. Simon Carter over on Facebook again, Really appreciate all your help, support. Um, yeah, just hope I can reciprocate, share the love. One day I will own a Zero West watch, guarantee it. All right, guys, thanks as always. Catch you all in the next vid. Cheers.